Okay, good. So, your name and professional affiliation? I'm Marcia Angel. I'm a physician. I'm senior lecturer at Harvard Medical School, senior lecturer in social medicine, and I'm former editor in chief of the New England Journal of Medicine. And you're an advocate for a single payer system here in the United States. Why? I have been. I have been uh, oh, since the late 80s or early 90s. I wrote editorials in favor of when I was at the New England Journal of Medicine. Because it's the only way to make sure that everyone gets comprehensive health care, not a little bit of health care, uh, according to medical need and not according to their ability to pay. I've really always thought that it was irrational to punish people twice for being sick. I mean, they're punished, first of all, because they're sick, and then they're asked to pay for it, as though it were a privilege, as though it were a vacation to the Bahamas or something. And I think it's bad enough being sick without having to pay for it. Right. So, um, why do you think, given your strong view on this, that it's the only way, and a lot of doctors feel that now, why do you think it's not happening? Well, it's the only way, because it's the only way to do two things at the same time, to provide comprehensive universal health care and to control costs. Uh, you can do one or the other of those things. Uh, if you, for example, as members of Congress and the President now want to do, you can expand coverage, but if you do, you will increase costs, and the country can't afford that now. Or you can control costs, but if you do that, you'll decrease coverage. They have to move in parallel. They have to move in parallel. So when I say it's the only way, I mean that literally. Right, but it's, if it is the only way, then yes. why, if, if you believe that, and many doctors believe that, then why isn't it happening? Why aren't we, we getting it? Interest Congress uh, and the insurance industry and pharmaceutical industry have enormous lobbies, and they get what they pay for. They get what they pay for. And the only answer is for the public to mobilize, and we're beginning to see that. We're beginning to see the public come out strongly for single payer, even while Congress says it's unrealistic. And people begin to see that gulf. There's a gulf between what Congress says can be done and what the public wants. To be done. Senator Baucus has said that, and you just met with Senator Baucus, yes. he has said that he doesn't believe the polls that a majority of doctors or a majority of American people favor single payer. Well, what's your sense, just putting us polls the aside? Polls are, the, the polls are clear. Uh, you know, he, he might not believe it's raining when it's raining, but it's still raining. He doesn't get to not believe that. Okay. And so, just a prediction here. Will we see a single-payer system in the United States, and if so, when? I'm afraid not. Uh, I think that the lobbies are so powerful that Congress will come up with some, they'll come up with small little expansions, and they'll celebrate it as though it's a big deal. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll arrange for some more people to get coverage. Costs will go up. It'll be said to be a big deal. As costs go up further, they'll have to shrink benefits. They'll have to to, to shred it. Uh, and then people will draw the wrong lesson. They'll say, oh, it costs too much to provide universal care. That's the lesson they'll draw, and that's the wrong lesson. Uh, the lesson should be, you can't do it the wrong way. You have to do it the right way. So not this time, but next time? Well, there may be another 15 years during which it's the third rail. I mean, my fear is what we're going to see is an extension of this market-based system so that wealthy people get their health needs taken care of, uh, and the rest of us really don't. Uh, we get something like the stripped-down managed care or even worse. That's my fear. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Thank you.